Hi, this is Lori with It's Time Sunshine. I'm going to be talking about Space Holder. It's from my blog, what I like to call journal. But here we go. It's time to find a space holder. It is the most valuable gift one can give and receive. To be fully heard without judgment, comparison, advice, questioning, and interruptions. To be fully present without any agenda. My journey, I've done a lot of deep inner work. I'm good at holding space with others, but I have a hard time opening up. It's true what they say about how it's easier to help others than it is to help ourselves. We all need support and guidance on our journey. I believe we are magnetically drawn to people that we are meant to help and in turn help us to grow. I was fortunate enough to be drawn to the person that would become a major space holder in my life exactly when I needed it the most. When I became ready to absorb the message I needed. When I was in a place where I felt comfortable enough to actually share my story and thoughts with another human. Someone to confide in and to actually truly receive the message that I needed. Opening my heart space the way that I needed to wouldn't have been possible at any other time in my life. I was ready and there are no coincidences. We are placed in each other's lives for a reason. I learned so much through this experience that I never knew was possible. One thing I learned about myself was that I was living in constrictive fear-based energy. I had to dig deep to understand my emotions connected to my fear. I revealed my core beliefs of not feeling good enough or deserving. I'm learning to feel my emotions now and tune into the core messages. How to honor where I'm holding onto the emotions within my body. Then connecting the feeling to my core beliefs, old and damaging beliefs about myself. To wedge myself out of feeling stuck in my life releasing guilt and shame from old childhood wounds. Once I was able to recognize where the emotion stemmed from, I could relate that to a core belief that no longer served me. I was able to connect the feeling to a core belief and release that belief. I was able to take a small step to stop that negative, nagging self-talk. Then I was able to give myself healthier affirmations. I am good enough and I am deserving. I slowly began to create new core beliefs that better served me. Letting go of self-doubt, self-hate, and fear is an act of compassion that we all deserve. That's what being kind to ourselves, self-care, and finding self-love is all about. It's time we stop bullying ourselves and honor our worth as human beings. I realize that beating myself up over my old beliefs only creates more self-loathing and fear. Space holder. What does holding space with someone mean? It's when someone comes to you at their most vulnerable. When all they want is to be heard and validated by another human being without fear of abandonment or judgment. Sometimes just to let things hit the air helps to lift a weight from our heart. Five tips for becoming a space holder. Number one, safety. Feeling safe enough to express our innermost vulnerable self is the first and biggest step. Feeling safe to fall apart if needed or to fail. Falling apart without feeling like we are permanently broken. Just acknowledging that we are safe and there's nothing that can harm us right now is a huge help. We need to hear that a lot, but it's not the only way we, that we feel safe. We also need to know that it is just between us. Confidentiality is important when we are feeling vulnerable. We don't want to feel like the world knows our deepest hurt or that you as the space holder would ever use what we say against us in any way. Number two, hear us. Don't just listen. Validate our feelings so we know that you hear us. We don't need remedies. We need your soul to see our soul. Know how to read body language. Ask if we are comfortable with a hug. Sometimes what, we share, what we've shared 
makes us feel too anxious, and a hug could overwhelm us. Ask if we are able to continue if you feel our body language is becoming tense. Let there be silence to allow us to gather our thoughts in order to continue. Sometimes things come out wrong, and if you don't understand what we're trying to say, please ask us to elaborate. We don't like being misunderstood. Repeating back to us what we've just said or how we are feeling sometimes will help us know you've heard us correctly. Number three, projection. Don't project your stuff onto us. Allow us to make a different decision than, when, than what you might make in the same circumstance. To have a different experience than you. Ask if you can share a similar experience you had so we know that we are not alone in our feelings. Not sharing to compare, but to show your vulner vulnerability. Not sharing to allow an opening to tell us how you remedied your experience. Allow us to ask you how you overcame your situation. Don't volunteer that information. We may not be in the place to hear that just yet. Four, don't take our power away. Let us make decisions. Let us talk it out until we find a solution, unless we specifically ask you for guidance. Then step in to support and gently guide us through it a little bit. Give guidance and help with humility and thoughtfulness. The more wounded we are, the more defensive and reactive we are. We've not used our voice in so long that even a small remark about something irrelevant can send us into a clamming up again. Number five, consistency and routines are important. We need to know that you will be there that you will show up when, we, when you say you will, that you will not abandon us, especially if we share things that we've never shared with anyone else. We want to know that we can trust you completely, that you will not use what we've shared against us in any way, that we're sharing with you because you care enough to get to know us, not to use what we've shared against us, because that's happened with previous relationships. It's hard to open up when trust has been broken so many times. Finding someone with these qualities has transformed my life in so many ways. We carry our wounds deep in ourselves and ignoring them can create ailments. Getting to the emotional root cause can help us heal in so many ways. When we experience ailments, it starts to awaken us to begin to look at the root cause so that we can begin to heal our emotions. In my opinion, it's important for everyone to seek therapy as well as maintain a healthy lifestyle with food, exercise, spirituality, healthy relationships, and finding our calling in life. I'm a natural born investigator. I continue to explore things that will work for me and my individual unique body. One of many, many things that has worked for some of my ailments has been the bioelectromagnetic energy regulation device. I love it so much that I have become an affiliate for them and you can find more information on this blog here. The gut brain connection is real. When our gut microbiome isn't healthy, it sends messages to our brain that can cause anxiety and depression. When we have anxiety or depression, our brain sends messages to our gut and other parts of our body to cause ailments. You can find more information on the gut brain connection and mental health on my blog that I'm reading from here. Be gentle with yourself to, in finding your path to healing old wounds. Find a safe space holder, support groups, and a therapist to help gently guide and support you. Our free community is just beginning, and I hope you will be a part of our Sunshine Crew. It, it's super important to find a therapist and talk with your doctor. Just know that I will be here along with this great community when you are ready to begin or continue your healing journey. I appreciate you listening and I hope you go to itstimesunshine.com and find this blog called Space Holder. Thank you. Mm -hmm.